Hi, this is Michael Sansolo, and this is Shopping with Michael, where I take you inside today's supermarkets to help you shop better and smarter. Today we'll show you how to bag groceries the way the pros do it. It's an art and a science, and it can save you time in the store and at home. We'll also show you how to select the best fruits and vegetables, and we'll put a spotlight on why there are so many products on the shelves of today's supermarkets. We'll be back with all of that in a minute. Squirrels know how to save. They have to. But people, they're a different story. Some try coupons or check apps for the lowest price. Some wait for the word S-A-L-E. Many people, however, know that the lowest prices without coupons or special sales come when they regularly buy store brands. Food, beverages, household, health and beauty. Your supermarket, drug chain or mass merchandiser has store brands with comparable ingredients, taste and performance to more expensive national brands. A family of four can save $1,500 a year and you can squirrel that away for other things you need to buy. Store brands, the real way to save. Bagging your groceries may not seem important, but in fact, it's growing more important every day. More than ever, we as shoppers are bagging our own groceries. If we use the self-scanning checkouts that are becoming so popular, we scan our items and then we put them in the bags. There are an increasing number of stores where even if the cashier rings up our items, we still do the bagging. And then for some of us, we simply like to do the bagging even if there's a bagger there. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And that's what we're gonna learn. Well, there's no better way to learn bagging than from an expert. Many supermarket executives began their careers bagging groceries. Jim Wisner has spent 40 years in the supermarket business, and he knows all about it. Let's meet Jim. So Jim, is there a right way and a wrong way to bag groceries? Well, Michael, there's lots of wrong ways, but the right way depends on, first of all, what's in your shopping cart, how you wanna get it to your car, and how you wanna get it into your home. All right, well, I wanna start with the wrong ways because I make lots and lots of mistakes. Let's take the typical brown paper bag. How do we pack this thing properly? Well, the first thing you wanna make sure is that you have the bag open because it makes it a lot easier, you can go faster. A lot of people think that you're gonna wanna put the heavy items on the bottom first. Not necessarily. The best thing is to find something that's square so you can build sort of a you know frame that the bag holds up better. Then you start bringing in maybe some of the little bit heavier items, uh, some things to fill in the middle, and you'll go from there and then start to, then you start to build up with your weight and crushables on the All top. right, one of the mistakes I always make is if I put the bread too low, something lands on it, my wife is mad at me for a week. So what do I do with an item like bread? And here's another one. Okay. We've got eggs, because eggs are fragile. Who goes on top of whom? Well, I, interestingly enough, the one thing you want to know about eggs is not to put them down that way. That's bad. You always want to keep them flat, but it's interesting, the eggs are a little sturdier than you think they are. And if you have something lightweight on top, so if you were to put the eggs near the top of the bag, and then put the bread on top of that, or a bag of snacks, or something that's very light, you'd be just fine with that. So I also have my tomatoes. Where would I put produce items, especially the really fragile ones, like tomatoes, bananas, on top of this? Well, these are all fragile, they'll bruise very easily. So the most important thing is that if you keep it around something that's softer or flatter, but not near cans or heavy bottles, because that's what'll really do some damage to That's me. when I end up with smashed mm -hmm. tomatoes. All right, here's another issue that always makes me nuts. Occasionally when I buy meat, poultry, the package leaks. And uh -huh. if it's a paper bag, it can rip the bottom out. Even if it's a reusable bag, it can cause some damage. What do I do to keep these things safe? Well, the real easy way is when you have anything that may leak uh, or, or has some moisture on it, it's just, you know, everybody has these plastic bags. You would just uh, wrap it, put it in this, in this bag, fold it around, and then it goes in. I'm going to take my bread out right away. Okay, put so that back still in. still stays on top. Sure. All right, and, and I and just put it in. And just to follow up on that point, a lot of us have these reusable bags now, and the shape seems so similar to the paper bag. So we do the same thing, open it up and pack it pretty much the, the same, same way. The same thing. The big difference with these is they're actually stronger than the paper bag. So you can put, while well, you don't want to get too much weight in these, because if you have handles, it can tear off. And these, you can be a little more aggressive with putting weight into them. Yeah, and I guess one of the keys, because you're using these again and again, if something were to spill, 
you got to make sure you, you clean these out because this can be a problem. All right, let's talk about the plastic okay. bags. I know there's still a lot of those around. How do we pack those? Same way as paper, or is there a different strategy here? It's actually much easier for these because the bags are a lot smaller, first of all. So the important thing is just to make sure that you distribute out the weight. And then the other thing that at least when I'm shelf checking that I like to do is I may try to get all the produce in one bag so it's easier to put away when I get home. The other thing to know about these bags is if you have something, anything that's a chemical item or anything that can taint the food in any way, either from smell, so with food you might pack onions in a bag, uh, or something like this that may have some things that could uh, affect the food, you'd put that in a plastic bag as well, separately from everything else. Well, I noticed when you set things up, you kept those things separate. So as I'm putting my groceries on the belt, should I do the same thing, try to put the items that I'd like packed together so it'll be easier it, for the bagger and for me? Yes, actually, that, that's very helpful. You notice in a lot of the supermarket chains, they actually train the checkers to make sure that as the products come down the line, they'll sort of separate them for the baggers at the end of the line to make that much easier. And you were a bagger all those years ago. Oh, it's yes, okay if I have a little chat with you and say, hey, don't put my bread on the bottom. Bagger's not going to get too mad at me. Oh, for sure. No, I mean, you need to tell them the way you want it because you're the customer, so that's just fine. Jim, this is fabulous because it's simple and it's something that we can all use. It's a great thing to learn and it'll help us get out of the store much happier. We'll be back in a minute. Fruits and vegetables are fundamental to a healthful diet, yet do you always make the best selection at the store? Here are some common sense pointers. You walk into your supermarket and the first department you always see is produce because the items are so colorful, they're so fresh, and we always buy them virtually every trip. But there are a couple of key questions we ask ourselves right off the bat. First, we see items that are conventional and organic, and a lot of folks these days are opting for organic products. However you are choosing them, you'll make your decision. It comes down to the way the products are farmed. But whether you're buying organic or conventional, you still have to pick products that are ripe and ready to use the way you want. So let's take a look at how you make better choices. We'll start with one of the most commonly purchased items, which is bananas. Now this one, a lot of us know how to pick them because a banana is pretty obvious. The more yellow it is, the riper it is. The greener, the more time it's gonna need to ripen. So if you want a banana to eat that afternoon or maybe tomorrow, it's gotta be bright yellow. If you want bananas for later in the week, they can be green, you'll be fine. But something we all buy a lot of. Not everything though is so simple. Take melons. Now a cantaloupe melon, I have my most fun watching people in stores pick these out. They smell them, they touch them, they squeeze them, they shake them and listen to them. Who knows if any of that works, right? Well, here's what you have to know about fruits. With a lot of fruits, you want to give them a little bit of pressure with your hands. If you can push too easily, the fruit may be too ripe and you don't want to buy that. You want a little bit of give, and that way you know it is ripening nicely, you can bring it home, it'll be ready to eat that day or the next couple of days. So remember, feel it around, and if you like shaking, smelling, or whatever, knock yourself out. That's always fun. When we get to an item like tomatoes, and of course, we're all buying these. Beautiful items, they look good, we can use them in countless ways. But with tomatoes, like so many other products, you want to check them out. Make sure there's no punctures, because a hole, that could mean that some bacteria is getting in, it could be losing its freshness, it could be losing its taste. So always give it a nice look around. It doesn't have to be a perfect tomato, but you want it in good shape. And the last one is leafy vegetables like lettuce. Now we know, we keep reading about this in all kinds of stories on diets, that we got to eat dark greens. In fact, we want to eat lots of colors, but dark greens are really good for us. Kale, spinach, and even romaine lettuce. When you're looking at a leafy vegetable like this, Give it a look over. You want to make sure there's no insect damage, that no parts of it are turning black, because that means it's going bad. As long as it's nice and firm, you've got some produce that you're going to be able to use for a couple days. And that way, you're going to fill your refrigerator, you're going to fill yourself with good, healthy food. We'll be back in a minute. Many times when I'm in the supermarket, I see shoppers shake their heads and sigh. They're looking around. There are so many products, so many of them are so similar to each other. And they just wonder why, why are they out there? 
Well, let's take a look into this really important topic because there are a lot of products on the shelves and frankly, a lot of them are really similar. Let me show you one category as an example of this. Now this is, I've got a group of oils here in front of me and quite frankly, there's a lot more oil in the store than I've got here. You can find products now like peanut oil or avocado oil and they're perfect for certain types of cooking. Like if you want to make, say, Thai cuisine or Indian food, you're going to need the right oil to bring out the flavors. And depending on whether you're cooking something at high temperature or low temperature, you use different oils. So let's just take a look at a couple of these. We all see stuff like this. This is an oil product, but it's a spray product. We use this now to grease a pan. You just spray it on, easy to use. This is, again, a relatively new product. It used to be that we only used butter or regular oil to do that. Now we've got an aerosol product that helps us. And if you look at what I have in front of me, we have things like corn oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, all slightly different. All give a slightly different taste and actually have slightly different health profiles. So depending on what we're cooking, you got to look at your recipes because it may call for one oil or another and the right oil will make the food taste the way you want it. We also have these olive oils, and, and everyone has seen this, because there's virgin and extra virgin, and I've got an extra virgin here, and a regular virgin, and a light, and these two give a very distinct taste, depending on what you're cooking and how you're cooking it. This is something we really have to watch in our kitchen. For instance, you don't want to cook at high heat with olive oils. If you study up on this, or when you're looking at recipes, you'll see high heat, you use these kinds of oils, like vegetable oils. Low heat or raw, you use olive oils. So yeah, there are a lot of choices for us out there to make, and yes, at times, it may get a little overwhelming. But let's keep in mind that those choices will help us make our recipes the way we want them. So here's what we have to do. When you make your shopping list, be careful, make sure it matches up with the recipes you have. So if you need a specific oil, you'll pick the right one. And in the store, carefully look at the labels. Make sure you're getting the right one because there is a lot of information on those labels and you've got to choose carefully. When you do it correctly, you end up with the right product and that'll help you make the right recipe in the end. That's how it works and it works for you, we hope. We'll be right back. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new about shopping at supermarkets. This is Michael Sansola.